Good day grade 10s, welcome to our second lesson in trig functions. Today's lesson we're going to be looking at the cosine graph. So we're going to do exactly the same as we did with the sine graph. We're going to be plotting points, I know, tedious, but it's the best way for you to get an idea of what this graph looks like. And then we'll talk about amplitude, range and period all over again. So let's first of all get out a pen. Okay, and again, we need to get out a calculator. There it is. And we're going to say, okay, fine, what do we need? First, let's clear our calculator. And we want to remember your calculator has to be in degrees. So you need to see a little D at the top of your screen or somewhere. Now, we're going to substitute in just like we did before. So the first thing that we're going to do is your cos of zero. So cos of zero is one. So I'm going to fill in a one here. Then, back to our calculator, cos, cos of 30 is going to be 0 0.87, 0 0.87, cos of 45, cos of 45 is 0 0.71, 0 0.71, cos of 60, is 0.5 cos of 90 is 0 okay so what have we got so far let's just have a look at this so again I'm going to say that this is a half and this is 1 and then this would be 3 quarters or 0 0.75 and this would be a quarter and that is 30. So this time the cos graph starts at 1. So when x is or theta 0, y is 1. When theta is 30, y is 0 0.87. When theta is 45, I don't have space for it, it's about over here. Okay, but when theta is 60, it's a half. And when theta is 90, we're down to zero. So do you see that we've got this shape here? Okay. So now at this point, what do we think is going to happen to this graph? I think that probably if it's going to follow the same type of shape as the sine graph, it might go below the line. So let's plot some points and see what happens. So let's get my calculator out again. And this time we're going to go cos of 1 20. So cos of 120 is minus 0.5. So we were right. It does go below the line. Cos of 135, cos of 135 is going to be minus 0.71, minus 0.71, minus 0.71. Cos of 180, cos of 180 is minus 1. Okay, cos of 210, cos of 210 is minus 0 0.86, not minus 0 0.87. Cos of, I'm going to skip 225 and go straight to 240, so I'm going to go cos of 240 is minus 0 0.5 cos of 270 is naught. The reason I skipped the 225 is because I know that I'm not going to have 225 on this x coordinate. So it wouldn't be, it would be kind of pointless because I wouldn't be able to plot it. But the 240 is going to be the 270 is. And let's go to 300. So we've got cos of 300, cos of 300. And we've got 0 0.5. So 0 0.5. And again, again, I'm going to skip over to the 330. And we're going to go cos of 330 equals 0 0.87. So this is 0 0.87. And finally, cos of 360, cos 360 equals 1, equals 1. So if we plot this, we can see that now what's going to happen is we've got it going from, let's see, 120 goes to minus, so let's just write this in, this is going to be negative 0 0.5, 
this here is going to be negative 0.25, this is going to be negative 0.75, and this is going to be negative 1. You really shouldn't mix your thing, so you should also have that this is 0.25, this is 0.5, and this is 0.75. There we go. So now you've got them in both formats, but you should only be writing them in one. So at 120 we're at minus 0.5 so again if you look at this we've got that that's 90 goes to 180 and it's in three sections which means it's going up in 30s so this is going to be 120 this is going to be 150 180 210 240 270 300 and 330 Okay, so let's plot our points now. So 120 goes to minus 0 0.5. Then we've got 180 goes to minus 1. Then we've got 210 goes to minus 0 0.875, 87. Then 240 goes to minus 0 0.5. 270 is back up to 0. 330 is going to be 0 0.87 and 360 is 1. So if you look at that and we join the dots you can see that it's got the same type of shape that the sine graph has except that it doesn't start in the same place but it's got the same type of wavy shape. Okay let's look at the amplitude. Do you see that the furthest the graph stretches from the middle line is 1. It goes from 1 to 0 and from 0 to minus 1. So the amplitude here is just 1. But our range is what? Again we said it stretches all the way down from minus 1 to plus 1 so that's going to be minus 1 to 1. And our period, now the period of the graph remember is how long it continues the full cycle and you can see that what's going to happen is that this graph is going to go down again. So this year from 0 to 360 is a full cycle. So that there is 0 to 360. Right, so again, just like last time, you'll notice that there's some specific points that you'll need to always remember and that is that you've got 0 1, that there is 90, 0, this here is 180 minus 1, that there is 270, 0, and the final one is 360, 1. And these are the significant points for your basic cos graph, your y is equal to cos theta. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to look at what happens if we have variation to this y equals cos theta and how it changes our graph. So let's look at that first. So again, the first thing we're going to do is go y is equal to cos theta. So y is equal to 2 cos theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw the y equals cos theta first. So we know it started at 1, went through to 90, went down to minus 1, through to 270, 360. I'm choosing this as 1. So then we go down. And again, remember I told you no pointy graphs, please. Nice rounded curves. Okay, mustn't look like shark's teeth. And please feel free to use pencils and erasers. Okay, so that is your basic cos graph. Now we're saying y is equal to 2 cos theta. Y is equal to 2 cos theta. So what we're doing is we're going, okay, fine. We've got y is equal to 2 times whatever the original value was for that cos theta. So when we had theta equal to 0, our cos theta was 1 and now we're timesing it by 2 so therefore we're going to have 2. Okay, do you understand that? Let me prove it to you on a calculator. So let me get the calculator out and if I move that over we're going to say 2 cos of 0 and you'll see it equals 2. So I'm right. Okay, everybody happy with that? Let's carry on to the next one. If we go to 90, we see that cos of theta, cos of theta is 0. So 2 times our 0 is just going to give us 0. 2 times by whatever was the original was at 180, which is minus 1, is going to now be minus 2. 
If we plot 270 on our calculator, just to check that we are doing this right, we've got 2 cos 270, and do you see it's 0? So therefore this is 0. And let's just do the last one on the calculator, just so you can see we are doing the same right thing. We're just making sure that we understand what's going on. If I plot that on the calculator, it becomes 2 cos of 360, we end up with a 2. So this is 2. So now if I plot this, if I say that's 2, we've got 2 going down to 0, going down to minus 2, back up to 0, and back up to 2. So what have we done? Do you agree that we have doubled the amplitude? We have doubled the amplitude. So the reason we have done that is because we've basically taken the y value and multiplied it by 2. So the amplitude now is just 2 because it is how far you are from your zeros and that is 2. Your range is now from minus 2 to 2 and you will notice we haven't affected the period. The period is still 0 360. Okay, so not too bad. Let's go and try something else with the cos graph. Let's look at minus cos theta. So again, just to make it easy for me to see what's going on, I'm going to put 0, 90, minus 1, 0, 360, and I'm going to plot some points and join the dots. Right. Now that is your basic, what I do is y is equal to cos theta. So now what we're doing is we're putting a minus in front of that and we're going to do exactly the same thing for the cos graph that it did to the sine graph. But if you don't remember that, what does this mean? It means the same as y is equal to minus 1 times cos theta. And we're going to pop this in the calculator, but what I want you to do is start thinking about what you would expect this to do. Because, like I said in the previous video, ideally, in exams, when you get something like this where y is equal to cos theta, you go, okay, fine, I know what a cos theta graph looks like. Draw a little rough sketch for yourself and then go, right, now what does this, what manipulation have they played with us? What have they done? And then you can work out what your new graph is without having to plot 100,000 points. So, do you agree that if I've got a minus in front of this, if this was cos 0, for example, this is y is equal to minus 1 times back cos of 0. But we know that cos of 0 is 1. So therefore, we know that this should be minus 1 times 1, which is minus 1. So we would expect that that would be minus 1. But now, we can, if this is a bit overwhelming for you, we can just pop it in the calculator. So let's just get the calculator out, and we can just clear it to make it nice, and we go minus cos of 0 and it becomes minus 1. Ta-da! Let's do the next one. We've got minus cos of 90 and that is 0 which we kind of expected because 90, cos of 90 is 0 and 0 times anything is just 0. Let's look at the 180. Okay, let's pop it in the calculator. We've got minus cos of 180 and we've got 1. Okay, now let's have a look at that. That became 1. But that makes sense again, because if we had to do it here, we'd go y is equal to minus 1 times cos of 180. We know that cos of 180 is minus 1, so it becomes minus 1 times minus 1, which is just 1. Cos of 270, we know is going to be 0, because 0 times anything. So what do you predict the 360 to be? Cos of 360 is just 1 again, and 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. So what does this graph look like? There's the dots. Okay, so here we go. And then it goes down. And there we go. Right, so what have we done? Do you see it? We've just flipped it over. So what was positive is now negative. What was negative is now positive. So this negative number, what does it do? Again, it just swaps the graph, swaps the graph across 
the x axis. Okay. And the amplitude, nothing's changed. It is still 1. The range is still from minus 1 to 1. And the period hasn't changed at all. We haven't made the graph all squishy or we haven't stretched it out. So the period is still 0 to 360 degrees. Right. Let's look at something else. Right, now let us look at this graph. Before we start looking at this graph, I want to draw a basic cos graph. So we're going to draw y is equal to cos theta. So we're going to start off at 1, 0, minus 1, 0, and 360. And we're going to go, wee. Okay, you don't have to do the sound effects. Just ignore them. I'm sorry. It's a very bad habit that I just don't seem to be able to break. Right, so that is your basic cos graph. We know this cos graph. You should now be starting to really be able to recognize this cos graph. So what we are doing now is we're looking at what happens when we take our basic cos graph and we add 1. So you can verify this for yourselves by using your calculator, but I want to show you how I would like you to do this in the, in the exams or in your tests. So you would obviously not draw it the original I would just go like this. I would go, okay, fine, I know it does this, and I know it goes from 1, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And then I go, right, what am I doing? I'm plusing 1. So let's think about this. What am I doing? I'm plusing 1. So when theta equals 0, cos theta is 1, but now I'm adding 1. So therefore, I'm going up a 1. So therefore, I'm now at 2, okay? At cos of 90 degrees, I am normally at 0, but now I'm adding 1, so therefore I'm going to be at 1. At cos of 180 degrees, I'm normally at minus 1. So what are we doing? We're going minus 1 plus 1, which is 0. At cos of 270, I'm back to 0, so I'm going 0 plus 1, which is 1. So it's back up to 1. And 360, I'd normally be at 1. So it's 1 plus 1, which equals 2. Now, great, then seriously, if you're struggling to understand how this works, pop these in the calculator, no problem with it at all, and you'll get exactly the same values. But I really want you to start practicing this because it's going to make your life a lot easier in the long run, trust me, especially when they do lots of different manipulations all in one graph. Okay. So, that is our new graph. So, our amplitude now, if we look at it from the zero line, the amplitude is still 1. But the range has changed what? It goes all the way to the zero line, but up to 2. So, the range is now 0, 2. And the period hasn't changed. It's now from 0 to 360 again. So, it's 0 to 360. Right. So, in summary, y is equal to a is equal to a cos theta plus q. Okay, then what you need to realize is that, and I'm going to draw, this is the sine graph to remind you what the sine graph looks like. So let's just remind you what now the standard form of the cos is. It's going to be going down here. Then what does it do? It's going to minus 1, 270, and up to 360. And what I want you to do is remember the difference between the two graphs. Oh, it's a terrible drawing. Remember the difference between the two graphs. So if it starts at a zero with the sign, it, it, it is zero at zero, it is a sign graph. And if it starts at the plus one, then it is the standard form of the cos graph. It is a standard form of the cos graph. I'm just going to draw that little bit again because it was terrible, terrible. Guys, please remember that you guys have erasers and you have pencils. So it makes life a lot easier. Right, so what does the amplitude do? The amplitude makes the graph go bigger or smaller. So it basically increases your amplitude or decreases. So if A is increased, you get a much star deeper graph. And if A is small, you get a much shallower graph. And Q, remember, if Q is positive, what do you do? The graph shifts up. 
and if Q is negative, the graph shifts down. Okay, that's it, grade 10s. That's the cosine rule and the cosine graph. Please make sure that you understand the difference between the sine graph and the cos graph, how they change when we manipulate them, and if make sure you can plot all the different types. Have a great day. Thank <music> you.